enemies. Ryan Crocker is a former U.S. ambassador to six nations, including Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. He joins us now. Live ambassador, welcome. Thank you, Shannon. I know you have great concerns that we have U.S. and Iraqi forces uh, working together, a number of organizations working to stabilize that country and move forward. And you worry about the message this uh, now sends to some of those countries and the complication it could be for those relationships as well. Uh, absolutely. Uh, these are seven very different countries. Uh, Iraq in particular stands out. Uh, this is not an adversary uh, government. Uh, this is a government we are allied with and are fighting with right now to expel Islamic State from uh, the city of Mosul. Uh, so I, I, I just don't think it is a good step to uh, cast into doubt that important strategic relationship. Uh, and they've got a double whammy against them. Uh, uh, the president a few days ago spoke of uh, his regret that we hadn't taken Iraq's oil back in 2003 and said that maybe there will be another chance. Uh, and then, of course, we, we ban all travel um, uh, uh, by Iraqis into the U.S. So they're asking themselves in Iraq, uh, you know, are we an ally or are we not? And that's not where you want to be on the eve of a major push into uh, western Mosul. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the fact that these seven countries that are outlined in the executive order are ones that weren't of the choosing of the Trump administration. They were initially identified and set aside by the DHS under the Obama administration. Does that soften this at all? Was the Obama administration wrong to single out these specific seven countries? Uh, uh, Shannon, I, I honestly don't know where the Obama administration uh, stood on all that. Uh, uh, but. It's today. Um, it's no longer the Obama administration. It's the Trump administration. And uh, I, I think we need to get this right. Can you speak to the fact that President Obama back in 2011 put a six month hold on Iraqi refugees coming into the U.S.? Uh, any lingering impacts from that, how that was received in that region when it happened uh, those five, six years ago? As, as I recall, I think I was in Afghanistan at the time, uh, focused on other issues. Uh, there was not a great deal of uh, commotion uh, over that. And, of course, I've seen the conflicting statements as to what exactly happened at that time. Um, you know, I can't sort it out, and I'm not sure it is particularly important to have it sorted out. Again, we are where we are today. Uh, it's the steps we take today and going forward that count. And, and Shannon, if I could, uh, uh, there's one special subgroup in all of this, uh, and those are the Iraqis and Afghans uh, who, who served us, who were our interpreters, uh, who were our support network as we uh, went into combat. And these guys went into combat with us. Uh, uh, Iraqis are now, who performed that interpreter role, uh, are now blocked. Uh, the Pentagon is making a huge effort to identify all of them and and then present that to the president and request an exemption. Uh, but we, we've got an obligation to these people. They risk their lives for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd like to see us meet that obligation sooner mm -hmm. than later. Yes, and I know that folks across the street from here, me here on Capitol Hill, are working to specifically help that group as well and make sure they do get singled out for the extra help and protection. Ambassador Crocker, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you, Shannon.